So I was playing around with some numbers and I think I noticed some sort of pattern. So for example, when I add one squared plus two squared, I end up with five. And when I add up one squared plus two squared plus three squared, I get 14. And you may not notice this quite off the bat, but I think if I add up the first n squares, I get n times n plus one times two n plus one all over six. Okay, now the question is, I think this is the pattern. How do I actually prove that this is the pattern? That's where the principle of mathematical induction comes in, and it's a very useful technique. It's a little strange when you first see it, but I'm going to explain it right now and show plenty of examples. Okay, so the principle of mathematical induction says something along these lines. So we're going to let p of n be some sort of statement with n being in the natural numbers. And if you haven't seen statements written like this, where it almost looks like functional notation, you can kind of think of that as like the count. The n is the count. The, this is the nth iteration of this statement or this formula, an equation, something like that, okay? And there's a couple things we know. First, we know p of 1 is true. So the first instance of our formula or whatever, it does work. Secondly, we know this conditional statement, that if the kth iteration of our formula works, then that means that the k plus 1th iteration of our formula works. If we have those two things, then p of n is true for all n in the natural numbers. Okay, now the picture of this is dominoes. I think it's a great way to think about it. So if you imagine if we had a bunch of dominoes set up here, all right, and we'll let this one be the first one. And when we say true, what I mean is that domino has fallen over. Okay, so I know that the first domino has fallen over. And as I keep going down the list, when I get to the kth one, if it has fallen over, then what we know from our second part of our statement here is that the k plus one one also falls over. Okay, so imagine, we know that every time if the kth one falls over, the k plus one domino falls over, we also know that the first one fell down. So what does that mean? That means that all of them will fall, all the dominoes will fall. And that's the principle of mathematical induction. This is one we can actually prove, uh, though I'm not going to. Uh, I would rather spend time looking at some examples. The two categories of questions that we deal with with getting introduced to principle of mathematical induction are the summation examples, like I did with the squares, one plus one squared plus two squared, etc., and inequalities. And I'm going to give you one example of each of those to kind of show you how they work. Okay, so now let's look at my proposition that I proposed earlier, that for n is greater than or equal to 1, these are being natural numbers here, we have 1 squared plus 2 squared up to n squared equals this n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. And how are we going to prove this? Okay, we're going to prove it by induction. And these early induction proofs are very formulaic. You'll see a lot of this language show up over and over again. So we're going to say we will proceed by induction. Remember, a big part of proof writing is not just getting the math right, but communicating it well. And early students kind of want to skip over the communication part, but that's what's, it's very important. I mean, that's really what we're trying to do here, proceed by mathematical induction. By saying that, it just lets our reader know the strategy that we are applying here. Okay, now the first thing we need is to show that the first domino fell over. So for n equals 1, uh, what do we have? We have 1 squared equals um, 1 times 1 plus 1 times 2 times 1 plus 1 over 6. And please tell me that is a true statement. Let's see. I get 1 times 2 times 3 over 6. Yeah, that's 1. So 1 does equal 1. And I'll say, and so the proposition holds for n equals 1. Okay, now this part here is called my base case. That's showing that the first domino fell down. You have to have a base case in your induction proofs. If you don't, you can prove some horrific results. They'll look true, but they're not because you didn't cover the base case. The first domino never fell down. All right, now what do we get to do? We get to, we need to show that if the kth one falls down, then the k plus one th one falls down as well. The way you do that is by supposing that the kth one does fall down. Okay, so we're going to say, Suppose that for n less than or equal to k, so going up to the kth iteration, we get 1 squared plus 2 squared all the way up to k squared equals k times k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 over 6. Now, this part is what we call our induction hypothesis. We get the kth iteration for free 
we need to show this implies the k plus one one. How do you do that? Well, that's kind of where sometimes it gets a little tricky. So then we're going to say then we got to go from the kth instance to the k plus one one. So we're going to say let's start with that kth domino, which again is this formula. And now how do I get to the k plus one instance? Well, with these series questions like this, all I need to do is add the next term into the series. And I don't know that's my formula exactly, but what I do know is that I have a formula here from the kth iteration, and I'm just gonna add a k plus one squared to it, just like that. Okay, now hopefully algebraically, this will turn into what I want. And sometimes it's worth going on the side and figuring out what it is you want, because we don't, it's not always obvious. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to think, all right, the, I know the kth instance of my formula is the 1 squared up to k squared. What does the k plus 1th instance look like? So that's going to be 1 squared all the way up to k squared plus k plus 1 squared. We got that so far. So what I would do is I take my formula and I replace n with k plus 1. So that's going to be k plus 1 for n. Then instead of n plus 1, I'd write k plus 1 plus 1, which is k plus 2. And then I have a 2 times k plus 1 plus 1, all over 6. So something like that. And I'd like to point out here that if you distributed the 2, you might end up with 2k plus 3. So that may be what shows up in our formula. That will work. We can deal with that. All right. So coming back to our proof, I'm hoping now that in particularly this part will turn into what we just had and I can prove that it will with algebra. I'm going to get a common denominator. I could FOIL out the k plus 1 squared but what I notice here is that I can actually once I bring these two things together I can take out a k plus 1 and when I do I have a k times 2k plus 1 plus 6 times 1 more k plus 1 all over 6. If that's not obvious, look here. If I distributed the k plus 1 back in, I get k times k plus 1 times 2k plus 1, which is right here. And then on the other side, I have a 6k plus 1 squared, which is right there. This makes my algebra a little bit easier to work on it this way, though the other way would have worked just by foiling it out, getting like terms. So now I end up with, let's see, k plus 1 times Okay, let's see, I got some k squared, I got a 2k squared, and I believe that's what, a 7k, and then a plus 6, all over 6, and I just got to factor that 2k squared plus 7k plus 6, and if you think about it for a little bit, you do get k plus 2 times 2k plus 3. You want to double check me on that? Let's see, foiling that out, you get 2k squared plus 3k plus 4k gives me 7k plus 6 over 6. And notice that is our k plus 1th instance. All right, so what is going on again? At this point, so right here, I implemented the kth domino, and then I added what I needed to to get to the k plus 1th domino, and then I let algebra take over and showed that my formula worked again for the k plus 1th instance. And what's not written here, which I could have done, is that this, again, is 1 squared plus 2 squared up to k plus 1 squared, and that gave me that formula. So to finish here, I have to say, therefore, by the principle of mathematical induction, you can shorthand it as PMI, 1 squared plus 2 squared plus all the way up to n squared equals the formula that I thought it would. And then I want to say for all n, I could say for all n in the natural numbers, or if you want, you could say for n greater than or equal to 1. However you want to say it, it's the same thing, end of proof. When students first go over this, they think that we're cheating a little bit because it looks like we assumed most of what we wanted right here. It looks like we just kind of assumed what we wanted. But remember with principal mathematical induction, we say if p of k is true, then p of k plus 1 must be true as well. So with an if-then statement, right, if I'm trying to prove if p then q, I always start out by supposing p is true and then showing how q follows. So here, if the kth instance is true, 
then the k plus 1 thesis is true. So even though it feels like we're cheating a little bit, we're actually not. Now, a few particulars. I mentioned the base case and the induction hypothesis. This part right here, where we're actually going from the kth to the kth, k plus 1 step is called my induction step. And then finally, right here at the end, where I'm saying therefore by PMI, that is my conclusion. Your induction proof should have these four elements. Okay, let me show you another example. Okay, my proposition says for n greater than or equal to 2, 2 to the n power is less than n plus 1 factorial. And you might want to play around with that to see if you believe it. I'm just going to try to prove it here, and we will follow our formula. We will proceed by mathematical induction. Okay, so let's see. If n equals 1, so we start off with my base case, then I get 2 to the first is less than 2 factorial, and, well, that's not true, right? 2 equals 2 factorial. So this is a problem. Well, pay attention. It said if n is greater than or equal to 2. So n equals 1 is not really my base case. The first domino is maybe our second domino. When n equals 2, if n equals 2, then I get 2 squared, which is 4. And that is less than 6, which is what 2 plus 1 factorial is. And so the proposition holds. All right, so there's my base case. Now I need, secondly, I need what? An induction hypothesis. So we're going to say suppose for, I'll say something like this, for n greater than or equal to 2, less than or equal to k, 2 to the k is less than k plus 1 factorial. And now I've got to figure out how to use that fact to build to the k plus 1 instance. Okay, now Let's think what the k plus 1 th instance looks like here. What would that say? That would say that 2 to the k plus 1 is less than k plus 2 factorial. And how do I get to that? If you think with the series, how did I go from the kth to the k plus 1 th instance? I just had to add k plus 1 squared because that's the difference between the two. This time, how do I go from 2 to the k to 2 to the k plus 1? Maybe I can multiply both sides by 2. All right, so I'll say consider, and that's just a good way to start these inequalities because you do not want to start a sentence with a symbol. So I consider this inequality. Now, how do I go from 2 to the k to 2 to the k plus 1? We said it earlier. I can just multiply by 2. So I'm going to multiply both, both sides of this inequality by 2. So that means I get the... 2k plus 1, but I don't have the k plus 2 factorial here. I have 2 times k plus 1. This is where inequalities get a little tricky because we always want to just kind of do the same thing to both sides, which we've been taught to do in algebra. But with inequalities, as long as I just keep getting larger on the right-hand side, the inequality is still true. And let's think real quick. Remember, n is greater than or equal to 2, right? So k plus 2 is definitely greater than or equal to 2 because all of the values that we have are going to be greater than or equal to 2, which means then this 2 here is actually less than or equal to k plus 2, okay? That's the trick. The 2 times k plus 1 factor factorial is actually less than or equal to k plus 2 times k plus 1 factorial, and that means, I mean, what is k plus 2? times k plus 1 factorial, that's k plus 2 factorial, right? And there we have it. That's what we needed. So now my conclusion, therefore, by the principle of mathematical induction, 2 to the n is less than n plus 1 factorial for all n greater than equal to 2, end of proof. I hope this makes sense. All right, this is a little bit trickier because of this one little step here. All right, so again, I could get to that step because I remembered that n is always greater than or equal to 2, so therefore k plus 2, and that could get what we needed because k plus 2 times k plus 1 factorial is k plus 1 factorial. All right, guys, I hope this makes sense. Mathematical induction is weird at first, but it's definitely worth going over. About 80% of my dissertation 
dealt with induction proofs. It's a very, very powerful technique to add to your arsenal. Let me know how I can help, and thank you for watching.